Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be drawing the chair conformations of this particular cyclohexane derivative and uh, we're going to be drawing both of those. We'll figure out which one of those out of those two is going to be more stable. So I have these three substituents on this cyclohexane. I got the methyl group on the top and then I have this isopropyl group and then got this ethyl group. You can clearly see the methyl group on the top is going to be coming out of the page, your isopropyl group is also coming out of the page, and your ethyl is going back into the page. Now I want to kind of go ahead and number those, and it doesn't really matter how you number those, this is just for my own convenience. And keep in mind, I'm not numbering those according to the IUPAC rule. I'm just trying to figure out at what positions you're going to have those substituents when I draw my chair conformation. So they're not according to the IUPAC numbering. So let's go ahead and draw a chair conformation here. So suppose I got uh, a chair that looks like this. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and number my chair carbines and it doesn't really matter where you start numbering as long as you go clockwise. So that's a typical way of going uh, numbering the chair. So I'll go ahead and call this one, call this two, three, four. I got five here, six here. So I clearly see I got on the first carbon, I have a methyl, which is coming out of the page. So I'll go ahead and draw that going up. So initially, let me change the color. Initially, you may not draw the most stable chair conformation, so that's why you have to draw both of those and you have to figure out which one of them is the most stable. But I'm just going to be drawing how it appears on this cyclohexane that's given to you in the beginning. So there's nothing on second carbon, so just leave that one empty. On the third carbon, I got this isopropyl group, which is also coming out of the page. And it's all, you can also say that isopropyl group and that methyl, they are cis to one another. Another way of saying they're both coming out of the page. And I can clearly see on number three here, I'm going to have to make that isopropyl group coming out of the page like this. Or going up like this so that they can both be cis to one another. And how do you know they are cis to one another? Well, clearly you can see your methyl initially was pointed up like this. So to make your isopropyl group cis to that methyl, this has to be pointed up as well. So that's why they are both pointed up at this particular position. Now, when we're looking at my number four carbon, on number four, I have this ethyl group going back into the page or with the dashed lines. So as a result, this ethyl on number four should be pointed down. So I should have it something like this. And also, you can say that my ethyl group and the isopropyl group, they are trans to one another. So if your isopropyl group is coming out of the page, your ethyl group is going back into the page. And on the chair conformation, I can see the isopropyl group pointed up. As a result, your ethyl group must be pointed down. So in this particular case, it's pointed down. So that's why they are trans to one another. So that's going to be your one conformation. And this may not be, this is not going to be the most stable confirmation. And uh, before you actually make your mind and make the decision, you want to always go ahead and draw the second confirmation. So let's go ahead and flip this. And when you flip it, let's see how that's going to look like. So when I flip it, um, I'll have the chair looking like this. Okay, so not a uh, very good structure, but uh, let me maybe enlarge a little bit. Okay, so then I got, uh, when you flip everything, your carbons kind of move. So, so this is indeed going to be your carbon number one. This is carbon two. This is carbon three, four, five, and six. Now, once you have drawn one chair conformation, the flipped form is going to be relatively easy to draw. In a flipped form, your axial position is going to become the equatorial and vice versa. So if you see on the previous one, I have this methyl group on the axial position. But when I flip this, that particular methyl group is going to be going on the equatorial position now. So this is 
uh, gonna be looking like this. So I got a methyl group right there going equatorial. And then on the third carbon, I got this isopropyl group and that was axial before. And now all of a sudden this is gonna flip and when it flips, it's going to be on the equatorial position. So if they're on the third carbon, I'm going to have this particular isopropyl group that's going to be going equatorial at that particular position. And then going on to number four. On number four, I have this ethyl group that was axial. But when I flip it, this, this ethyl is going to be on the equatorial now. So on the number four, I'm going to be drawing that coming down like this and your confirmation as uh, with respect to your original structure still stays the same if I go back and look at uh, uh, maybe I'll change the notation here if I look at this metal group that was coming out of the page so that means in the chair confirmation it's still it needs to be pointed up still and that's exactly what you have in both of those chair confirmation it was pointed up here and it's also pointed up onto the second confirmation and then when I look at my isopropyl group your isopropyl group was also coming out of the page and since it's coming out of the page it needs to be pointed up on the chair confirmation and that's exactly what we have we have it pointed up here and we also have a pointed up in the first confirmation. So that stays the same. So when it's uh, it's kind of uh, on the equatorial position on that number three, it's, po it's pointed up. So I can draw it, the arrow kind of going up there. And then I can say the same thing about this ethyl group. The ethyl group was going to be your going back into the page. And since it's going back into the page, it needs to be pointed down. And that's exactly what we have in both of those cases. It was pointed down in the first confirmation and in the second confirmation is also pointed down right there. Uh, at the fourth position, what's going to be pointed up? Well, your axial is going to be pointed up if I want to kind of go ahead and draw that. But that particular axial is going to have only hydrogen and you don't really show the hydrogens in there. So that's, uh, that's the reason you don't want to kind of make it too crowded and draw all those things in there. So now I got these two confirmations. The question is which one is going to be the most stable confirmation so when i compare among those between those two confirmations i see i have three groups on the first one to be on the on the axial position so that's an axial that's an axial and that's an also an axial and then on the second confirmation i got an equatorial an equatorial and equatorial so all of those are in the equatorial so more groups you have on the equatorial the better you are and also the biggest group needs to be on the equatorial and in this particular case you have this isopropyl group that's going to be your biggest group and you want to make sure that's on the equatorial position and uh, turns out you have everything on the equatorial for the second confirmation and as a result this second confirmation is going to be more stable than your first confirmation so this is how you're going to be trying to figure out what's going to be your most stable chair confirmation. If you have any questions, feel free to leave any comments in the section below.